Welcome to PhD with Women on It Hack the Future. My name is Beata Young, and today's PhD Positivity Hack Delivered will be by our guest, Penn Houston. Today's topic giving new life to one use plastics. Episode 51 starts here. Let me remind you, this is a grassroots community that focuses on women on it, an inclusive forum of women in technology, startups, and female leaders who are supported by men as well. And I bring heart to that hustle because empathy is my motto. And empathy is critical when you are giving a new life to one use plastic. Before we dive into the topic, let me mention a few highlights. I would like to congratulate Michelle Jalanze for her wonderful motherhood exhibition at the Motor Society of Arts last January 23rd. Well done as well to Dr. Karin Jakubowski, founder of Educational Impact Academy, on launching her second mindful parenting course that will start next week. And what a great bug from Minka Zupans of typewriter. Indeed, stupidity is a pandemic too. And I would like to also mention our lovely PhD guest, um, Gabe Lukacs, who appeared on PhD last year. And she is using recyclable material to create her bugs. Let's go into the single-use plastic. And one-use plastic for a child can be of many things, but for an adult, it seems to be a useless piece of rubbish. Aim for the elimination of waste through the superior design of materials, products, and systems, including business models, is at the core of circular economy. The goal is to reduce material use, redesign materials to be less resource intensive and recapture waste as a resource to manufacture new materials and products. Reducing the creation of waste with local communities in mind is at the heart of CRISP Packet Project, CPP. It is a worldwide project giving one-use plastics a new life to help rough, rough sleepers survive on the streets. This year, CPP Hastings headquarter has made over 2,350 survival items and sent them around the UK all year round. CPP is all about making something from nothing to help someone be productive and give others a sense of purpose. CPP founder, Penn Houston founded the idea bike in November 2019, and now she has been on different platforms such as social media, ITV Channel 4, Euronews, newspaper, and PhD with Women on It, Hack the Future. She also mentors other CPP area groups and others with this project. The project will keep going until plastics change or crisp packet materials change. Join us, ask your questions, never forget to give mentions to whoever needs to watch us and join our discussion. Pen, where in the world are you today? I guess it's inevitable. We can see some of your materials in the background. Tell us where you are. I am in sunny Hastings and it is sunny today and I'd like to thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your beautiful Women On It today uh, to discuss uh, plastic and Chris Packet Project. Um, yeah, we're down on the south coast in Hastings. I have to say that when I heard about your project and it was actually Racy who's working with me in, in sourcing great speakers, um, I was like really puzzled. How do you make money and to who, how do you keep on going with what you do? Well, financially, uh, basically, yeah. um, when we started this uh, project, um, well, it is self-funded. Uh, we do get donations from the public and uh, certain organizations, but we're a non-profit uh, organization. Um, basically all volunteers, uh, helping one use plastics and helping our less fortunate community throughout the whole world now. Mm. 
So you started your uh, project in Hastings and now you launched local organizations. Are you man managing these local uh, wings or is it some volunteers that are doing it for you? So our main uh, HQ office is down in Hastings. We're, we're the sort of main hub of it all. But um, we have uh, it's roughly about 37 to 40 area groups of CPPs. Um, they're all volunteers and they're all independently run. So they basically run off um, the sort of umbrella of what we've uh, made with all our um, information. Um, but um, yet they're all independently run um, and they've all got their own Facebook pages, um, which you can find on our, our website to hit the link. Um, but they all can uh, do pretty much what they want to do to help one use plastics and help help their less fortunate communities, as well as we are sending items to those groups um, and other areas uh, around them to help them out because a lot of them are on their own, uh, volunteering and doing the project on their own, especially through this pandemic. It's been quite, quite tough to get volunteers. Um, I'm very blessed down in Hastings that we have a good bunch of about 15 volunteers that make these items weekly so yeah well done yeah. you good uh, leadership <laughs> skills definitely we can tell that back um pen i would like to mention our lovely watchers today agatha bellon great to see you back beata with phd well i've been there last week uh we are coming next week so nothing stops us um, we have got Olga Vasina. Welcome, Penn Houston, and hello, Beata. Great to see you on PhD. Great to see you, Olga, as well. Hello. Now, hello. The question for our lovely um, audience is What is your opinion? Yes or no? <laughs> Ban plastic single, uh, plastic use, or no? Please vote now. It's uh, our very good uh, moment of glory to really vote what we think about it. Because if you um, mention the single use plastics um, in UK, they mentioned the government mentioned the fact that they are planning to ban it completely. But actually, 75% of people want single use plastics banned global survey finds. If the United Nations cannot agree on a deal to put the brakes on plastic pollution, there will be a widespread ecological damage over the coming decades, putting some marine species at risk of extinction and destroying sensitive ecosystems such as coral reefs and mangroves, according to um, study released this month. So you thought of using it this way, can you demonstrate to us what really you are doing on a daily basis? So basically, um, it's all about the crisp packets. And it's an amazing material that shouldn't be going to landfill. You can uh, recycle it in different ways, but a lot of it, pretty much three quarters of it, if not more, goes to landfill every day. So basically we get crisp packets and we cut it open one side and we open it and we wash it in warm salty water, um, salty water, sorry. We stick it in the washing machine in a pillowcase or even a dishwasher. And we basically fuse these packets together. And we fuse them together with a bit of partridge or baking paper, which is this, um, an iron, and one used plastic waste, which again would have gone to landfill. We get this from a, a social company down on the um, south coast, but you can get this from any uh, supermarket. And we basically fuse them together to make a survival sheet. Uh, this is 44 crisp packets, um, or you could make one a little bit bigger. I'll just quickly open this up for you to show you. Um, this is a, it takes about an hour, an hour and a half to make. Um, and these are a life-saving um, bit of kit that our less fortunate community like because they can use them in all different ways. Um, these are also really good to keep in your car if you sadly have to come across an accident or anything like that. They're a bit like uh, um, when you're um, on a marathon or something like that because the reflection of the crisp packet 
go back into your body to keep you warmer. So basically, if I plug my iron in quickly, I can quickly show you how you fuse your crisp packets together. Just bear with me a second. Yay. A little bit of <laughs> DIY this evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just get my plug plug in. <laughs> So yeah, it's quite it's quite easy, and actually, um, this project has helped so many people. Not just on the streets; it's obviously helping one use plastics, but it's helped people throughout the pandemic because they're getting busy at home and doing all different things. Um, and working as a unit, a team in your in your community. If you have a CPP, please do find out where your nearest one is and get involved. Um, so basically, you want your iron on two and a half. And you want a bit of cartridge paper. And you literally, I'm just going to turn the camera down a bit, okay? Just so hopefully Excellent. you can see it on the table here. All right? Yes. And we basically want rows of four. And you can do it any, any way, but overlapping it by about one centimetre with your cartridge paper on top. And I tend to do this at work. I'm at home at the moment, but you can do it on a wooden table. And it basically just fused together like this. Fabulous. And you can use bigger bags, bigger bags, smaller bags. It, um, you'll find certain colours, certain thicknesses aren't as good. Um, for our demonstrations, and I find these softer bags work better for us. But um, And you just basically do, do strips, strips of four, and then we build them together. You then do another strip, and then we're going to add them. We'd add them all together. So you would do four times eleven strips and add them together in one big hit. So if I just quickly show you two more bits, as we're short on time, <laughs> so we'll do that one like that, and then we we'll join it together. And then we basically sandwich it in between two bits of plastic and we fuse the plastic. So this is be the filling. So then we put them together like this. Obviously, they'd be in rows of four. And then we would and fuse just like that. Off. Just like that. And then you just build the grid up, really. And then you would get the plastic waste and you would fuse it over the top like that. I'll just quickly show you that. So you do this both sides. You can see how it just fuses on there. Then you can make it's so it's so good for this material now when it's like this. It looks a bit like leather, and what and the more you uh, scrunch it up the more it gets more and more durable, which, which is really good. So these aren't mm. like something that would last uh, five minutes on the streets. They last an incredible long time on the streets. And we make many different items here at CPP and also our other area groups do. Um, we make, um, we send out kit, kit bags, um, so wash, wash kit bags. So we're sending mm. out these with cool goodies in there, which have been mm. donated. Um, we make um, sleeping bags, which is uh, 135 crisp packets now, uh, which is like a, a biffy bag that you can either use as a sleeping bag or put your sleeping bag inside of it. Um, originally it was 150 crisp packets and we got it down a little bit smaller now. Um, obviously we've got the survival sheet, which is what I showed you first off. They can be 44 crisp packets or 75 crisp packets. Mm. And then we have pillows. <laughs> we have nice pillows again filled with clear plastic waste um we'd also do plastic waste with weave mats as well which are really comfortable for our less fortunate community bless them uh mm. we also make ponchos from clear plastic waste bags <laughs> but it just goes on really to be honest you can pretty much make anything once you've got that material <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, um, Ben, explain to us how um, how you came around this idea because it 
uh, it requires some stakeholders to be engaged. It's not just you that carry uh, crisps because you wouldn't look so thin if you were eating all these 150 crisp packets, right? Yeah, actually I've been put off eating crisp packets, crisps now, not packets, but crisps now. Um, I used to eat them sort of probably every other day, but now I probably once a month, to be honest, because it is absolutely shocking. The amount we get through uh, the post here at Hastings, um, it's just unbelievable. So um, yeah, basically uh, the reason um, I came across this idea was that I was working or volunteering for a fantastic charity down here on the South Coast and we didn't have the funds to buy sleeping bags. So uh, I just woke up one day in a green crisp packet and thought, oh, it's just a fantastic material. And the next day we just started fusing uh, crisp packets together. And so, yeah, well, I do have a team down here that are very dedicated making items and we send out items on a weekly basis around the UK. Um, today we've sent out two boxes to Doncaster and last week we sent out three big boxes to Strand in London. So yeah, I'm not doing it all on my own and I'm, I'm not eating all the crisps. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And also I've heard Ben that you managed to um, agree with one of the crisps uh, producer to um, help you with your aim, right? I mean, um, you uh, told me that uh, some of the producers are uh, encouraging people to donate these packets and bring them back to the, the um, line, producing line, right? Oh, oh well, we, we donate a lot to TerraCycle that then helps fund our project um, here. But um, no, the manufacturers actually haven't been that in um, encouraging, to be honest um oh. sadly mm. yeah no well hopefully um Sorry. we can inspire them to chip in and really help uh, uh to reduce this uh, landfill or material so it's very useful um do you know how long does the bag last have you checked it well the um crisp packet actually lasts over 80 years it's, which is shocking to actually mm. decompose. So um, we are now reinforcing it with plastic. For instance, this bag here I've had for over two years and I use pretty much every day. Um, mm. But um, I know less fortunate communities on the street, sadly, that have had uh, their, their items for quite a few months. Um, some are obviously rehomed now, so that's great news. And they tend to either pass their items on to the next person or like I said you know this one used plastic was destined to landfill there's no getting away from the fact that whatever we make from plastic is ending up in landfill and that's why it does need to be banned um mm. you know it shouldn't be it shouldn't be made anymore to be honest and also plastic can only be um re recycled twice people a lot of people don't realize that um, also, mm. you know, paper can actually be re recycled five to seven times. So um, at the end of the day, you can make what you can out of one used plastic and, and, and it is going to end up in landfill. So, you know, we need to we need to stop this one plastic waste yep. problem. Absolutely. The Ipsos poll also showed that 85% of respondents globally want manufacturers and retailers to be held responsible for reducing, reusing and recycling plastic packaging up to from up from 80%. So 5% more people year on year believe that plastic should be recycled. So what are alternatives for single-use plastics? Are there any alternatives, Ben Houston? Well, there's always lots of people coming up with some amazing ideas. I mean, um, I've seen the avocado um, skin ones coming hopefully out, mushrooms. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a great. I mean, I do believe that the reason that we are on this planet is to come up with these amazing um, alternatives, um, you know, plastic, Plastic waste is a problem, sadly, for the environment. Um, but we will come up with a solution. I do believe that. And um, it's, only, it's only time. Um, and, and if everyone could just think outside the box more, 
we would definitely come up with uh, something that is going to be even better than plastic and uh, won't mm. be stuck in landfill or in the sea. <laughs> Totally. Uh, we have in love and in pain praising your idea. Great, great demonstration. I will definitely do that, she says. We have Natalie saying, wow, that's an incredibly innovative idea, Pen. Uh, I agree with that. So um, we uh, as consumers can definitely participate in change and one of the things uh, that I did when I had back in the day when I was running my cafe was encouraging people to bring their own cups by giving them discounts so definitely that worked uh, like a wonder another idea is uh, bringing your cups or, or um, tools or whatever you're uh, going to use uh, to eat your meal uh, during the lunch break rather than using the plastic because apparently the average person uses 18 throwaway plastic plates and 37 single-use knives forks and spoons each year, according to ministers, while the durability of plastic litter means it kills more than a million birds and 100,000 sea mammals and turtles every year around the world. Pen, what advice would you give to companies that could minimize their carbon footprint? Oh, gosh. Where do you well, start? Like I said before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so hard, isn't it? I mean... Uh, we're all to blame. Uh, people say, oh, you know, we should tax more and blame the big, big boys in their, in their uh, warehouses and stuff. But I, I honestly think it all boils down to the consumer. And if we don't buy and if we think like, you know, you're driving home from work and you're a bit thirsty and you go and buy a bottle of water and if you just wait another half an hour, an hour, you'll be home. And I just think, you know, we just all got we're all in this together, aren't we? You know, we've got to think outside the box and think about what we're consuming. And um, I really, I'd love to wave a magic wand. And But again, again you know, with all these big, big uh, factories and stuff, it's all about money. And they've outlaid so much on their um, machines. Um, you know, it, it will happen, but um, if, unless the government mm. really step in, Mm. That, that, for me, is the government and our consumer um, way we, we buy stuff. We need to, we need to just yeah. all be conscious about everything we do. Well, speaking of government, in the UK, uh, the government's plastic bag charge has cut their use in supermarkets by 95% since 2015, and it bans single-use plastic straws, cotton buds, and drink stirrers in 2020. I have to say that still I refuse to take any uh, straws because it doesn't matter if it's a uh, plastic or if it's any other material, it's still a straw. I can drink without a straw, people, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, uh, all of a sudden we we become such a such a lazy people, and they have to have straws everywhere. It's quite funny. Well, research in 2020 found that people in the US and UK produced more plastic waste per person than any other major countries. Microplastic pollution has contaminated the entire planet from the summit of Mount Everest to the deepest oceans. And there is one of the very brilliant ideas. Uh, when I was recently in Turks and Caicos Islands, the government there encourages not only hotels to not to give away bottles with uh, plastic bottles or whatever container bottles, bottle water is there, but actually on every each and every floor you could refill your bottle given at the reception and you did not have to have single use plastic bottle so there should also be a focus on reducing waste at source as libby peck from the green alliance think tank says alternatives to single use plastic plates and cutlery made from other materials 
also aren't necessary and will store up environmental problems for the future. We need to address the root of the problem, redesigning the system and tackling the throwaway society once and for all. So, Pen, I think um, I was raised in during communist and in the communist Poland. We really were resourceful with uh, our bottles, for example. Um, glass bottles had to be uh, brought back to a recycling unit to actually get back and exchange toilet paper. So is that a time to implement something like that? Yeah, I, I mean, I know the uh, the um, milkman's back in his little cart, <laughs> coming to your door with your with your milk bottles. Back in the day, you know your silver top, because you know you can recycle silver foil, aluminium foil in your in your in your bin. Oh. But yeah, no, I think it's great. Swap things over. Um, mm. um, yeah, I mean, glass obviously takes a lot of energy to recycle as well so we've always got an issue on that one as well and obviously paper so it's all at the end of the day it's just trying to consume less 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 but um yeah obviously absolutely a major one yeah according to sustainability non-profit wrap milk is the third most waste wasted food product by households in the uk after potatoes and bread to produce milk that's poured down the drain takes a whopping 31,000 hectares of land. 31,000 hectares yeah. of land. To tackle that food waste, UK supermarket chain Morrison's is removing use by dates on cartons of milk, replacing them with a best buy and encouraging consumers to sniff their milk instead of relying solely on a printed date. I have to say that my daughter was always chasing me with her date checking and uh, never believed that I can actually taste it with my tongue and check whether it's still okay to go. Of course, there yeah. are some products that cannot be reused. I mean, definitely, I wouldn't recommend it on meat. I have got questions here uh, in love and in pain is asking, hi, Penn, what pushes you to create Chris Packet project? What pushes me? Um, for the, the feedback I get from it, the overwhelming, um, uh, it's a big ball of magic, this project, uh, just from the volunteers, handing them out on the street, to making them out of nothing. This is something to help someone. Um, it's a, a very passionate um project uh that's been going over two years now and uh it, it pushes me every week to make more and more items to help our less fortunate communities and if i could get them to other places like you know abroad uh we just got to think of your carbon footprint that's the problem but if we could get more and more groups abroad to make these for their less fortunate communities um that'd be great but that's what pushes me and my volunteers my volunteers are absolutely amazing they they work from home, a lot of them, and our workshops twice a week. So um, big shout out to them. Um, without them, I couldn't do any of it, really. And obviously, the lovely Addy, uh, bless her. Um, and, oh, don't forget Crispin. <laughs> um, yeah, all, all a big team. It's a big ball of love, Chris Packet Project. Um, we're all here to help each other. And together, hopefully, we can make a bit of different, bit of difference towards one use plastic on the way and help other people that have got nothing. Mm. So that's a, a big question I have here, Pen, and I wonder whether you can answer because uh, I cannot. Uh, but let's let's wonder. Imagine a zero waste society. Um, what would it look like? Gosh, it would be living off the land, wouldn't it? Mm. <laughs> Everyone growing their own vegetables in the garden, uh, a bit like the good life back in the day in the 19, I don't know, late late 70s when I was born. Um, you know, we used to have chickens and uh, grow all our own vegetables in the garden. Um, yeah, uh, what would it look like? Well, there'd be a lot more animals about. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, I, I don't think it's possible. I just think we need to revert. We just need to revert back back in the day when we didn't have these uh, things. Plastic's very useful, um, but uh, it's, I think it's had its day now. I think we need to move on and, and bring new things in. And, and it is possible, um, you know, even I've seen bags made out of hemp, all, all different mm. things. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a process that we have to go through. Mm. Has to get bad before it's going to get better, and we must keep positive. It is going to get better. There's a lot of good people out there, just just cracking on with it, and uh, you know, sorting it out. So it is gonna it is gonna be fine. I yep. do believe that. I do believe that too, Pen, and I would encourage everybody to make small steps because they definitely lead to big accomplishments. Here's one thing, uh, Pen, I think uh, you will find and viewers will find it interesting. Researchers and startups are making great strides towards creating a circular economy. But if we are to completely eliminate waste, it will require radical system wide solutions. Apparently, an international team of archaeologists working in Pompeii announced that they had found definitive evidence that the Roman inhabitants of the city were recycling and reusing waste material, particularly in for the construction of buildings. For the most part, we don't care what happens to our trash as long as it's taken away. What uh, we found in Pompeii is an entirely different priority that waste was being collected and sorted for recycling. Yet more than 2,000 years on from Pompeii, a linear economy, giving plastic and using uh, whatever materials that are, you know, focused on cheap, uh, being cheap, uh, not really being economically friendly, um, sustainable, is by far the predominant model in today's globalized society. This follows a take, make, consume, throw away pattern and importantly an ever increasing accumulation of waste and often more associated pollution to boot. So what can we, and maybe I'm thinking about female span here, what can we do with our shopping habits, for example, to radically change the pollution? Well, always go out with a bag so you don't have to buy one or Get, mm. get, get one um always uh take your coffee cup with you or your cutlery like you said mm. um obviously your sanitary items i think there's um well that's not too plastic though is it that's too recycling as well though but yeah your sanitary items there are the obviously other options you can use for that now um also get onto the government uh guidelines yeah. they change all the time on uh picking up your recycling stuff from outside on your curb, curb way. And I know different uh, nationalities uh, are on here today, but every, every sort of six months or four months check in because that's always changing. Um, supermarket dumps, um, but they're always collecting different items as well. Um, but um yeah, just be really conscious of when you're going out, um, what to take with you so you don't have to buy any plastic, basically. Absolutely. Something that I love about Maltese, um, when they are packing their bags of stuff, when you go to Vegetable Man, for example, here, they usually give you, hand you um, your stuff in a bean bag so it's quite useful because i don't buy bean bags then and i can use them as bean bags and uh, and still it's a good uh, use of product um so going back to ideas um i think also joining some groups that are focused and sharing uh, some good ideas on how to recycle how to um use some of the um, economy, uh, circular economy uh, inventions would be useful. 
checking what you're wearing and where are you buying your stuff, whether the carbon footprint is huge, whether you're buying it from China, what kind of materials you're buying, is it going to go yeah. to a landfill and never evaporate or is it going to stay forever on this earth, right? Yeah, definitely. Check that the, there's no real plastic in your in your garments, uh, natural source, where your cotton comes from, where your wool comes from. Uh, yeah, just try and do a bit of research. There's quite a few uh, new businesses out on the internet if you buy online that are all very um, ethnical, um, wet, wet source products. Um, yeah, try not to buy too much off the cheaper side of the high street, really, because it is there's a lot of plastic in, in those clothes. Mm. Oh, absolutely. And they are definitely not um, being made with communities on mind. It's really the profit on mind. Right. Uh, we had some great inventions also. Startup Notpla provided 30,000 edible and biodegradable liquid capsules for runners as alternatives to plastic bottles at the 2019 London Marathon. So that's also a good uh, invention. David Katz, the founder and CEO of the Plastic Bank, which monetizes plastic waste by turning it into a currency that helps some of the world's poorest people, likens the problem to an overflow sink. There is no point in mopping the floor until you turn off the tap. So the question is, is it a pointless exercise or powerful tool when you pick up the litter in the battle to beat plastic pollution? Sorry, could you repeat the question better? Sorry. That's okay. I, uh, <laughs> I, I was going to try and muddle through that one, but I don't know. No, <laughs> don't worry. Go, sorry. So the question is... <laughs> Is it worth starting small and doing something or is it not just worth it because we are just mopping the floor without closing the oh. tub? No, we must do something about it. You know, every little thing, every little thing builds up, isn't it? Imagine if we didn't do anything about it. God, there's some, there's some amazing people out there doing so much. And then, then, you know, you could just do something little by not buying that water bottle or that packet of crisps, you know. Um, we can all do something little, something big, whatever it is, it all makes a difference. And together, we can all make a change, definitely. Turn the plastic tap off. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, what next? What is coming for Chris Packet Project? Wow, Chris Packet Project. We have yes. thankfully got funding to go into schools and organisations around the Sussex area from projects that matter. And so we are basically going to our first uh, demonstration next month. Um, and we've made uh, Crispin, I don't know if you can see Crispin here. He's out oh. of um, one use item. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> um, he's, our, he's our mascot. And Addy, who's uh, the director of the Chris Packet Project, and myself, we are going to schools and organisations to teach um, everybody about recycling, homeless issues, and of course, Chris Packet Project. So uh, it's going to be great fun, um, really interactive. Um, obviously, Chris Bin's a mascot, so he's a puppet as well, which we made. Um, and so we're, we're going to be doing that for the next sort of year. Um, we also do Zoom demonstrations. I want to try and um, make stuff to keep people a little bit warmer in their homes because the price of electricity is going up soon. Um, so, you know, even something like this behind your radiator will keep your fuel bill down, believe it or not, because you're going to reflect your heat from your radiator onto this out into your room. So, you know, four packets of crisps, <laughs> fuse together a bit of plastic, glue that at the back of your radiator, you'll notice the difference. So there's three little things like that. I want to do a little video on that. Um, basically, we are still making items to send around the UK as usual. Um, but basically, yeah, we're, um, we want to help um, more of the area groups a little bit more um, on what they're doing. And hopefully they might be able to start doing some workshops 
in their areas. So yeah, lots. There's always lots to do. There's always so much admin to do. Um, um, yeah, we just we just cracking on basically, and uh, hopefully one use plastics for crisp packets. Um, well, it's only got 2025. Supposedly they're going to be banned. I'm hoping they're going to be a little bit to be brought forward. Hopefully. I've only got a few oh. years to go now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm sure with your invention and your great brain, uh, you will find something else to do uh, out of plastic. Uh, like, for example, Crispin, your mascot, who is going to help you. I um, Absolutely. He's a superhero because he? you've got the power. You've got the power to change this and stop buying plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, Pen, that's the plan for your CPP. Uh, what's the plan for Pen? What's your career objective at the moment? Well, I run the Art Shack. Um, I've been doing that since May 2019. I absolutely love it. Um, it's not a financial thing for me. Neither is the CPP. Um, I thankfully am blessed with a husband that... Um, pays for me <laughs> but basically yeah I, I just want to help people um, I'm, I'm an artist um, so I love painting creating all different things and I just love bringing people together so basically I don't that's all I want to do in life at the moment I've had a really really um, stressful uh, career for 20 years as a dog groomer um, I don't it wasn't that stressful it was at the end of it but anyway um, so basically I was doing that um, and so four years ago, I walked away from it all. And now I have the Art Shack, which I absolutely love. I love the community, uh, what it brings to me, what it gives to me. And yeah, that's all I need at the moment. It's not about money. It's about what, what love it's all about. It's a beautiful place, the Art Shack. And, and it's a good community uh, project, the CPP. Absolutely. So it's part of uh, Empathy Economy, uh, I would definitely recommend you reading about empathy economy we had a distinguished guest dr jackie taylor who was talking about the next step for everybody is not the sharing economy it is the empathy economy uh because this is how you help the community um pen what about that art shock can you tell us how you came around this project what inspired you to yeah start that. well so the art shack i set up in uh, may 2019 i've been looking for a creative space that i which was affordable uh so that i could hold uh, affordable community and free um workshops for local community um and so i wanted to do the big weave to begin with and basically uh i got approached by five the streets uh, James, he said someone at the Y Centre had some premises there. So basically, I, I rented that off the Y Centre, the beautiful Y Centre down um, in Hastings. So um, it's a creative well-being space. We do affordable workshops. And we started off doing the big weave, which is the weaving mat. And then we moved on to Chris Packy projects. And we do art and craft for the kids. And it's just great. We've got a garden project coming up at the moment in March and um, yeah no, the kids love it the adults love it and it's just great to bring people together um, it's like one of those old um, sort of 19 is it 1940s I don't know mm. maybe it's not that old <laughs> classrooms um, yeah so um, yeah it's great it's a lovely it's, a, it's, it's called the art shack because it is it it's a shack. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see your art shack. So how do you make this yeah. mat then? How do I make? The mat. How do I make? The mat you have mat. behind you. Yes. Well, this is weaving. This is a, this is a project that I wanted to do ages ago uh, for our less fortunate community. And we originally were doing it on six foot tables. But now we just do torso mats just for your you know, just be a back. Um, and we, we weave it all out of one use plastic that would obviously go to landfill. Um, and we do that um, every fortnight. We hold a group and we make these and some of our volunteers make them at home as well. Um, it takes about two hours nearly to do, an hour and a half, two hours to do one of these. Oh, some of our weavers are very, very quick. <laughs> 
So um, you mentioned that you're educating people on uh, consumerism and waste. Can you tell us what is the topic of discussion and how people react? Well, what to do with our workshops, our workshops, we're basically interacting with the children to basically teach them about where, you, where their recycling goes, um, how long recycling, um, how, how long plastic waste and the cardboard takes to decompose and and things like that really um it's about consumerism and um yeah what to do with your plastic waste hmm. could you tell us about the the problem we are having i think it's, it's a global problem uh, at least um, in poland i've noticed uh, many companies are offering insurance for your white goods and uh, apparently after two years uh, running these white goods apparently there are certain chips that make them faulty is that true or is that a myth pen i've never heard of that before mm. i don't know about white goods <laughs> I don't buy white goods, really. I've had my freeze, fridge freezer for ages. Is that what you mean, oh. white goods? Washing machines yeah. and stuff like that? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I do know one thing. There needs to be some sort of legislation. Is that the right word? No, it's not really the right word. That um, that people, that things can't be brought that go wrong so quickly. I can remember my mum having an old Hoover that she had pretty much my whole child into my teenage years you know nowadays you probably get get through about 10 overs you know what's going on mm. why, why things mm. break so easily why are they so rubbishly made never used to mm. be like that it used to be really really good solid stuff that lasts you know you'd pass mm. it on generation to generation now it's gone within i brought up one of those things to cut paper 50 mm. quid it was honestly it lasts it lasts me a month and I'm like, where's that going to go now? I'm either going to send it back. I know it's going to cost too much to send back. Where's it going to go? It's going to end up in landfill. I think that's, that, that's really shocking. I think someone needs to tighten up legislations about what people are making, you know, the quality of it. That gets Absolutely. my go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, well, I agree with you, Pen. I actually um, was trying to explain to my mother, who was uh, desperate to fix her um, CD player, and I said, nobody's going to, to fix it for you because they will demand too much money. And anyway, they will say, they will probably say, and that was the case. They said, it's not worth it because I would spend too much time and probably I wouldn't find the components for it. So just throw it away and that's w way worse than what it used to be we used to fix things we used to fix our tools and now it all lands in landfill olga vasina is making a comment thank you olga there is a considerable evidence of the phenomenon of built-in obsolescence thank you very much olga for expanding my vocab Tonight, we are still here with Penn. We are heading towards the questions of the century. What advice would you give to female leaders to help their career or start an entrepreneurial journey or start making a change in circular economy? Well, I think you shouldn't be scared. Uh, you shouldn't... Um... When I started this project, I had got a lot of negativity. I think you need to rise above the negativity. Uh, either uh, try not to argue too much. They've all got their own opinion. But I, I think just go for it. Uh, not worry too much about um, upsetting too many people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just, just crack on. Just crack on and get the job done. Um, yep. Absolutely. Uh, fearful don't be fearful raise above negativity in other words positivity hacks delivered by our lovely guest pen what is the number one book you can sit and think oh i wish i read it before i started my 
career or my journey with CPP? Well, I don't actually read that much because I'm quite dyslexic, but now I have audio books. I don't know if I should say that on here, but um, so basically Echo, Echo Tull, uh, The Power of Now. I wish I'd read that when I was growing up. Um, all his books I've pretty much read on audio. And uh, he, he just is just an amazing, amazing person. Um, and I, I wish I'd, I'd learned about him a lot longer. Uh, you know, when I was uh, even 10 would have been useful. <laughs> mm. Fantastic. Um, so none of us are able to achieve success without some help along the way. Is there a particular person who you are, you are grateful towards or who helped you with your project? Well, I'm always very grateful to my husband because, uh, you know, he's he's helped me so much mentally through every situation the last 15 years. Um, and also he's, he's helped fund this project at the beginning on our tours. Um, without him, I wouldn't be able to do half of what I do. But obviously this, is it this side? This lovely lady, Addy, Adriana Green, um, she's amazing. Uh, she does a hell of a lot for CPP. Um, so yeah, without her, she came in after a year of me doing all of it on, on my own, um, sorted out the website, sorted out just so much admin. We had drafts, you know, I didn't know anything to do with computers. Uh, you know, I had a little phone, I've now got a laptop and, um, so yeah, she, she's a great asset to CPP and she's just like a sister. She's, she's so much fun. She's got so much energy and passion and. She just wants to help people. So it's beautiful. It's so lovely to be around so many beautiful people. You know, all our volunteers just help each other. It's just lovely. And great uh, greetings to Adi. I know she's suffering with COVID. She couldn't help you today with your technology skills because apparently she's your tech diva. Um, <laughs> can, can we uh, hear the secret? Who's What's the name of your greatest supporter husband his name is dan <laughs> dan, houston. <laughs> dan houston don't be shy pen is giving you lots of credit credit without uh, backing us without your help us women cannot battle this uh, fight for our um, great achievements on our own because the greatest problems are shared problems that problems that nobody owns but everybody is affected by and we can talk about circular economy female empowerment female leadership all these problems that are shared and are impacting everybody um, on a daily basis then let's move on to the life lesson quote my left my mantra i do at the moment is do what you can, delegate or leave it, leave the rest. So I had to write that down. <laughs> yeah, and that is who my is life. This by? It's by myself. Bravo, <laughs> sister. <laughs> I don't know, someone Excellent. else might have taken it on, but I've taken it on. I'm owning that one for now. <laughs> Excellent. Tomorrow, tune in, you will see it um, appearing on our social media streams. And why does it impact you? Why this kind of mantra? Can you share a story? What? Uh, because you can overdo it. You can, you can, you can do too much. And I've learned now. I've, I've suffered from mental health. I, that's why I quit my dog grooming business. And you can overdo it. So you have to be really um, conscious of your, how much you can push yourself mentally, physically. Um, definitely give yourself more time to heal, self-love. Um, so, yeah, I do believe just, you know, do what you can. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> do what you can. Delegate out as much as you can and then leave the rest. Because you know what? People always want more out of you. We've been, I was brought up in the 1970s. They all wanted you to work hard, earn money get a good job, crack on, crack on, crack on. And, you know, it's not good for you. You, you do what you can, enjoy what you're doing, uh, 
and do more of what makes you happy. It's all, you know, that's what life's about. It's about having a joyful experience while you're here. Go with the flow with everything. And if it's not going with the flow, get rid. <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> Exactly. Use it like a single-use plastic, just discard. Right. Pen, imagine the pandemic is over and you can invite any person uh, in the world to have private breakfast. Who would you love to have a private breakfast with and where would you go to? Well, I would go back to my main man, one of my main man, main man Echo Tolle, um, and I would sit on a bench in a meadow and and the good thing about his chat um with the power of now is that you don't have to talk <laughs> you can just be and you can just sit there and uh that's what i love about him um and, and his teachings really is uh you don't have to explain yourself to anybody or talk to anyone you can just sit there for a while and just be and so echo echo Tolly, sorry if i don't pronounce your name very well Uh, but um yeah he's he's got a big big chunk of my heart there <laughs> he's great mm -hmm. well um uh, miss uh, our lovely um lovely production team has misspelled his name uh Cartoli. i'm gonna just uh, uh help them here uh hopefully they will get it right well Pen, it's been sure amazing. It. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, uh, uh, at least nobody's got a problem with my name or your name, Pen. Um, so, thanks to the fact that we married uh, lovely husbands who have got very useful surnames, like Forever Young, I can stay this way, and you can stay Houston. We have no problem with that. Ben, it's been a pleasure to host you in today's show. I would like to um, say thank you to Agata Bellon, Olga Vasina, In Love and In Pain, Natalie Lanto. Thank you everyone who is contributing to our lovely planet, whether you are going to make a bag or a sleeping bag or whatever you are doing to reuse Um, and making sure that you're not throwing it away, it's always useful. And that's it from 51 of the PhD in live stream. Thanks to our guest, Penn Houston. To stay updated and ensure you never miss a positivity hack delivered, follow Women On It and turn on notifications to be alerted once a video has been released. released. Penn, we will keep in touch. Uh, we would love to hear about your project and we will definitely share it with our community. And just a dose of inspiration. Only we humans make waste that nature can't digest. Charles Moore, Ocean Grapher. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. When you focus on the positives, the positives get more positive. I think we've seen it during COVID. Lots of nature has been flourishing when we used less or less of transportation during pandemic. And as always, our positivity quote comes from positive thinking only and goes, look for something positive in each day. Even if some days you have to look a little harder and you have to make sure that you're not polluting our planet. Today is your day to hack the future. Hug the good earth, good circular economy, and hug the positivity you want. Thank you, Pen. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. We have got our guest who will be Brigitte Felden from Germany, and she will talk about how to create a succession plan for your business. So again, we are not discarding whether it's single-use plastic, whether it's your business. Join us next week. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Bye.